All right, we are now at citizens' participation. All right, shuffle away while I read this. Okay, all right, all right. Lexington County School District 1's Board of Trustees solicits the advice and counsel of its citizens. To encourage this participation, the board provides a citizens' participation period during each of its regularly monthly board meetings. In order to speak, you must be a parent, legal guardian of a student currently attending a Lexington School District 1 school, a taxpayer residing in the Lexington District 1 attendance area, an employee of the district, or a student currently attending a Lexington District 1 school. You may comment on agenda items, school operations, policies, programs, or other matters. You may not speak about specific individuals, whether students or staff. We want to remind you that this meeting is being live streamed and that the recording of this meeting will be part of the public record in perpetuity. We want to give everyone who came tonight an opportunity to speak. And in order to do that, I will call on each speaker by name and ask you to approach the lectern at the back of the room. The board will not reply to your remarks nor take any action during the board meeting in response to your comments or questions. You may address the board for up to three minutes. Please do not clap or make any comments, either while an individual speaks or after he or she finishes. As you came in tonight, you received a card to fill out to indicate you would like to speak. That card asks for your name, address, and other information. I will read out only your name, the town you reside in, and the name of the schools your children attend when it is your turn to speak. Um, if you did not fill out a card, but you do wish to speak, please hold your hand up. Did everybody that wants to speak fill out a card? Okay. Um, anyone who is uncomfortable addressing the board in person, uh, you may reach out to us by email, telephone, mail, you, our contact information is on the district's website, um, and we welcome all messages and contacts from anyone. So, all right, y'all ready? We got quite a few tonight, so, and there will be a timer on the screen, um, but don't let that scare you. You just say what you have to say, and, and we will listen to you. All right, first up is, and she's been here the longest, so she gets to go first, is Miss Stephanie Berquist. Um, her students attend Beechwood. She lives in Lexington, and I'll let Miss Berquist. Take it away. Hey, how are y'all? All right, uh, so we get to speak on school policy, so that's what I'm here to speak about, and Lord knows we are tired of talking about it, but I have to keep showing up anyways. I usually say a tiny little prayer before I speak at town or at, uh, at to the board, and it was very interesting that the Lord uh, heard me today loud and clear. And I might be misquoting, but I think, Greg Little, you said when you were talking about the partnership with Midlands Tech that you're very excited about the partnership because y'all's goal is to encourage students to design the future. That was very interesting to me because that was not part of my speech, but I wrote that down as y'all were chatting about that. And uh, the partnership and encouraging to design the future is what y'all's goals and what you were excited about. And that is the exact opposite of what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, if the irony there doesn't hit y'all, that, that just strikes me. Um, again, I know nobody wants to talk about this. We are so tired of talking about the masks. My kids are tired of wearing masks. It's ridiculous, I get it, but here I am because I am here to speak for those who are too scared, too oppressed, or those who just simply can't come because of some type of responsibility. And I will keep coming until my thoughts are heard and until my rights as a parent and my children's rights are respected because that's what's going to happen at some point. Um, I spoke a few meetings ago. I've spoken at town since then. Again, I'm gonna continue to fight for our freedoms, our liberties, our kids, and our medical freedom. And I am raising independent children who do think for themselves, and I hope that they will design the future. And you'll actually be hearing from my daughter next. What's astonishing to me, uh, based off of anything that I can figure, is that one person is responsible for making this decision. One, not a board not the state, one person. And it's astonishing to me that that person does not represent what I consider and most parents consider the best interests of our children. Our voices as parents are not being heard. They're falling on deaf ears. I hope they're not falling on deaf ears now, but I can't hold my breath. Um, we have pleaded, we've begged, we've yelled, we've cried, we've done everything morally and legally possible to send our kids to school without masks. This is a massive, massive violation of our medical rights to mandate a face covering. In South Carolina, you can go to the district here, I presume, and get a form to 
exempt your child from vaccines. You cannot get a form to exempt them from masks. Where's the logic? I asked, trust me, I asked, you can't. The point is, if you can opt out of vaccines in a public school that our tax dollars are paying for, why can't you opt out of the mask? If people wanna wear a mask every day, I'm fine with that, but we don't. We never have, we never will, and I should be uh, provided an exemption along with anybody else in this room who wants it. Let's talk a little bit about what our schools look like. I have middle school kids, and I've had them taking photos of inside the schools since parents have been shut out of schools for over a year. And it's ugly, y'all, it's ugly. For those who either don't know, who can't go in, there's masks. They are surrounded by plexiglass, excuse me. They are reprimanded for talking to friends, standing too close to one another. And this is a situation that is becoming very ugly. Well, that went really fast. Uh, the bottom line here is there's nothing left to say, but we deserve an exemption. Um, masks don't belong in the school. Uh, we should at least have an option, and that's part of what our parental rights are and for our minor kids. Thank you very much, Ms. Berkowitz. All right, our next speaker is Sydney Berkowitz, and she is a seventh grader at Beachwood Middle School. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sydney Berkowitz. I'm a seventh grader at Beachwood Middle School. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about a few things of why I think the mask mandate and the plexiglass should be removed from schools immediately. Every day after school, everyone's going outside, going to hang out with friends or go play on the golf cart, have sleepovers, all that. They're, you don't see them getting sick with, without masks. Um, I know that the plexiglass is getting taken down soon, but y'all need to know how hard it is to learn with these things in school. When, when you're in the back at a low table, you can't see the board because of all the white stuff. So you can't see the board and that affects your note taking and you can't get notes. Um, you also can't hear anybody through it. So you have to pull your head around, which defeats the whole purpose of the plexiglass. Um, the mask, it's hard for you to breathe in the mask. You also can't hear people in the mask. You intend to take it down. And then people are yelling at you to put your pull your mask back up. And I don't want to be in fear to go to school to get written up um, and have to go back to the Online Learning Academy, which in my opinion, and many others of that I've heard, the Online Learning Academy does not suit me very well, or suit very, many other people very well. We have not learned anything in that. And also, if you miss one Zoom, you get absent, no matter if you, if you do the work, which I think is not fair at all. Now that we're going back to school five days a week, you spend 35 to 40 hours in a, a week with just the mask. Um, also, everyone who's going to school in person is sacrificing their physical health for school because the masks are not healthy for you at all. And I, don't want, and I should not be forced to have to choose between my physical health or my education. Also, most sports are requiring masks at some point while working out, which as well is not not good at all for your physical health. But thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. Good job. All right, next up we have Monica Breckenridge. Um, she lives in Lexington and has students that attend Lake Murray Elementary and Beachwood. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I wanna thank the board for all your hard work and Dr. Little, I know it hasn't been an easy year. However, I am here to advocate for the choice in mass for our students. Um, it is not the job of our schools to keep our children healthy. It is our job as parents to do that. However, if you are going to mandate such, you know, the mask, um, I think we should be looking at the health and mental aspects of it. Has anybody, considered uh, hiring a PPE expert, environmental hygienist. In hospitals, doctors are, and nurses are able to wear masks for long periods of time because OSHA regulates these things. It's not by some magic wand that, you know, they're, they're healthy, their oxygen is um, regulated, humidity is regulated, there's many things that go into this. Um, me and Dr. Little actually spoke about the choice in masks before, and I spoke to him about the fact that special needs children are getting left behind, and that doesn't seem to be a concern to the board. Or if it is a concern, nothing's being done about it. I have a three-year-old who, who is special needs. Uh, the psychologist couldn't even come to our home to do her examination, uh, which if any of you have special needs kids, um, it makes a difference 
and the environment, how they do, how they do the evaluations. Masks are not safe. We're seeing recalls for the masks because chemicals like formaldehyde are being found in these masks which are not regulated because they're for the general public, unlike medical surgical masks. So if you're going to mandate something, it is important that you look into the health risk. And where there is risk, you guys must provide us choice. Um, just like what she, what Ms. Burke was said, you know, we have the choice in vaccines, we should have the choice in masking. And I'm very concerned about the mental um, aspect of wearing masks. Why are children being punished for pulling down their masks for wanting to do something as basic as breathing? Pull down your mask one, two, three times, you get, a, you get written up and then you get suspended. When did that become acceptable as educators? Discipline does not mean punishment and children should not be punished for wanting to breathe. Um, the CDC has done studies for states that did mass mandates versus the ones that did not, and they shown, it showed that masks don't work. 1.8 decrease in cases per day in the ones that had mass mandates, 1.8. Is that worth putting our children in masks all day when you have not given us proof that it is safe for them to be in those masks for as long as they are? If this was you and it was your job, you would demand that somebody like OSHA or another agency would come and regulate this for us. So that's what I'm asking. Do that or give us the choice. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beth. Breckenridge. Um, next, we have Ms. Rebecca Godfrey. Um, Rebecca lives in Lexington and, excuse me, Ms. Godfrey. Um, and her students attend Lightson and Middle School and Midway Elementary. I'm here tonight to ask you to make masks optional for the remainder of the year. The kids have been in masks for parts of nine months, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. The actual children, 26,000 of them. All these months of mask wearing have given us data on their effectiveness. In March, the CDC put out a report that showed mask wearing lowered the infection rate I saw 1.3%. All of the kids' depression, stress, anxiety, anger, discomfort, headaches, confusion, tears, correction from the teacher for 1% infection. In Sweden, no masks are worn in schools at all. They have 1.95 million students who are wearing no masks. How many deaths? Zero. In Germany last week, a judge ruled that schools in Weimar are prohibited from wearing mouth-to-nose coverings of any kind after coming to the conclusion that they represent a present danger to the kids' mental, physical, and psychological well-being, and that they are violating numerous children's rights. When I hear masks are an essential part of keeping schools open, this is proof that they are not. It is time to let families decide how to keep themselves he healthy, mask or no mask. Before 2020, if I had forced my child to cover their vital airways with a two-ply mask for seven hours a day and sat them behind plexiglass in my home, you would have called social services on me. Now, if I go to the school and insist that my child will not wear a mask that blocks their vital airways or sit behind plexiglass, my child isn't allowed to enter the building. If making masks optional means we have to turn away CARES funding or any funding, so be it. We can, we can cover that cost. The health of our children is far more important than getting a grant to follow or following some illogical guidelines. And as always, any student or teacher who still wants to wear a mask is more than welcome to. They can even wear two if they want. All the teachers who wanted the vaccination have also had the opportunity. So it's time to move forward. The contact tracing also needs to stop. Please make a break with DHEC guidelines. A week ago, the WHO confirmed that the COVID PCR test is flawed and, I quote, the estimates of positive cases are meaningless. Do you realize that in the attempt to keep schools open through these preventative measures, you have forced more kids to stay home for more school days than they would have ever missed had you not interfered? Some kids have missed almost a quarter of school due to contact tracing, and they were not even sick for one single day. 
of their, quote, quarantine. Before 2020, had I just kept my kids home for 14 days when I thought they might have come into contact with someone who had a virus, I would have again been, been called out by social services. Now, if I try to send my perfectly healthy child to school when they are supposed to be in quarantine, they are, they are treated like they have the plague and sent back home. Please let masks be optional and end the contact tracing. Thank you, Mrs. Godfrey. All right, next we have Ms. Debbie Heim. Um, she lives in Lexington and has a student at Lexington High School. I've missed you the last couple months. Where have you been? We need to get together. When you're ready. Do you just go when I start? Okay, thank you. I was waiting for the clock to get going. Um, I love those updates. Thank you. All adults have had the option to get a vaccine if that's what they want. We are done. Okay, this is disappointing. We have two, two MDs up on this board, two pediatricians, and we carry on with all kinds of wonderful, lovely things we carry on with plexiglass. You know how they're described? They call them PPs, plexi prisons, okay? Put a piece of plastic right across the front on y'all, okay? And then try to look out at the board. You know what my son says? We just sit way back, mom. We sit way back and we look right over the top. Okay, it's ridiculous. It is, we're done, we're done. This is not an argument for grownups anymore because they had the option to take care of themselves. We're done and the children are done. They are done being your guinea pigs for this. Do you understand? And we will organize if we need to, but we are done, okay? Okay, we're done. Things I wanted to talk about tonight, two things. It would be fabulous if we could get, like I mentioned sometime, some kind of question and answer. Some people refer to this as a town hall. It is nerve wracking, nerve wracking to come to a board meeting. I thank Sydney for coming as a student. That is admirable. I thank her mother, I thank Ms. Monica and Ms. Rebecca for coming. Okay, the community wants to communicate with you and they would like a chance to answer questions so that you can ask them. They don't want this to be confrontational. They're not like me, okay? I will take hits. Other people don't want that. They want to be buddies with you, but they despise you behind your back. They do, okay? We all sit here and we talk about how wonderful our schools are, winning state championships from our programs and whatnot, and I know that you are proud of this. I know that. But to keep that, we need to step up. Okay, there are people who have seen this last year, what is going on, and they are, they are awake, okay? One final thing. I noticed that the minutes for the meeting from four weeks ago are still not posted as of five o'clock this evening. They're still not posted. I did make a request last month to have my meeting from my, my public comment from the previous month to be updated. It was an MUSD study showing the entire first semester students did not transmit this to students and they did not transmit this to adults. MUSC funded and followed the study. It was an MUSC study, not a Charleston study, as the notes note. I want that corrected, okay? And I would like minutes to be, to be up. I don't know why that's so hard, okay? Your community is proud of our schools because we are proud of our families here. And if we wanna stay proud of our schools, we need to step up, all of us. And we all know, and I'm gonna say it, but it is Dr. Little who has fully made the decisions for COVID, fully, okay? And the people are done, Dr. Little, they are done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Heim. All right, and now we have Mr. Matt Heim, um, who also lives in Lexington and has a student at Lexington High School. So something amazing happened in March. Um, and I think I actually listened to it and I tried to make a transcript and Jada asked the question, did we ever find out how this meeting was noticed? Was it posted on the district's website? And what she was referencing was a meeting for a subcommittee who was picking an auditing firm for the district. And Ms. Green's response almost immediately as it was scripted is, it was not. I will let Mr. Salters explain that. Then Mr. Salters went on to say, well, it was noticed in compliance with the state FOIA guidelines posted in a publicly accessible location, which it was. And it's supposed to, oh, hold on, backing up here. This is at about 1.35, hour, one, one hour, 35 minutes, 20 seconds into the meeting, uh, if you wanna watch it. 
And basically, they're talking about how, yes, this was noticed correctly. And basically, he's hiding behind the FOIA guidelines and says that it was posted in a publicly accessible location, which is apparently on a bulletin board in his procurement office, and on a centralized web page, only if the district has a purpose or a page for that purpose, which we've never established a web page for that purpose. So my question is, why don't we notice subcommittee meetings on how public funds are audited on the website? The website specifically says when you go to Lexington School Board is Lexington One's communications office notifies the media and all regular of all regular or special meeting dates, as well as any date or location changes well in advance of the meeting. And then there was kind of an ongoing thing about whether or not it was noticed correctly under the Freedom of Information Act. Now I have to speed this up because I actually read the Freedom of Information Act. It's really not that complicated. Section 30-4-20 describes what a public body is. Section 30-4-80 indicates notice of public meetings. It basically, it says all public bodies, except as provided in subsections B and C of this section, which actually applies to this because subsection C indicates subcommittees. And basically subcommittees are required to give notice of their meetings. They must make reasonable and timely efforts to give notice of their meetings. That's all it really says. And then it goes on to say that, um, The question is, yeah, why wasn't it posted on a website? I think that's really what I'm curious about. And then there was a question about whether a public body should be notified through the news media. And section E of section 30-4-80, subsection E says, all public bodies shall, shall is a key legal word, that means without exception, shall notify persons of organizations, local news media, or such other news media of uh, the meeting. In addition to that, all the efforts made to comply with this requirement must be noted in the minutes of the meeting. So first of all, I'd like to see the minutes of the meeting. I'd like to see the efforts that were made. That would be important. And then the other thing, too, is if you try to hide behind a public body, the public body under Section 3-4-20, subsection A, means that school districts, including committees, subcommittees, advisory committees, and the like of any such body by whatsoever name known includes even quasi-committees of governments and states. So that's a pretty broad definition. I think it's certainly covered there. And the other thing that's really important is the entire board, when Jada made a motion to just table it for four weeks to figure out if notice was right, there were crickets, crickets. Just figure it out, do it right, okay? When you're hiding money, that's what the public thinks. That makes us nervous, we don't like that. Just figure out if it's noticed right, please. I think that's important, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. All right, next we have Ms. Kaylee Purdy. And Ms. Purdy is a seventh grader at Pleasant Hill Middle. My name is Kaylee Purdy, and I am in seventh grade at Pleasant Hill Middle School. I am here on the behalf of the students because we do not want to have to wear masks at school and on the bus. Since last June, I attended camp, and we did not social distance or wear masks, and no one got sick. In August, we started playing soccer again, and we did not have to wear masks, and we, did, and we high-fived as we were walking off the field. We did not social distance from each other on the sidelines. Out of my 18 girls on the team, only one person got sick, and no one else got it. At school, all of us kids are forced to social distance and wear masks. But out of school, we all hang out without, without masks, and no one gets sick. Enough is enough, and we're all tired of having to be forced to wear a mask and stay away from our friends in school. I want to be able to hug my teachers and friends without thinking I'm doing something wrong. Not only should we not have to wear masks this year, but also for next year. Anyone who is afraid of COVID can get the vaccine if they wish. Please let us get back to normal. Thank you, Kaylee. Very good job. I believe that concludes our citizens' participation. Did we get all the cards from everyone that wanted to speak? All right, thank you everyone for coming tonight.